tradition in the Thames Valley Church that annually we have uh, typically had a collection towards the end of the year whereby we allocate funds that we uh, and support a program or programs uh, abroad. Uh, and we've been doing that for many, many years, uh, very successfully and fruitfully. And um, last year, uh, I think for the first time, we decided that we would also uh, allocate some of the funding to develop local projects. Uh, and Michelle has been hard at work yeah. uh, for the past several months, uh, yeah. really helping us and our family group to develop oh, a, a, a greater focus towards the poor. Uh, and really trying to figure out, well, what can we, in a meaningful way, do? Um, and try and do something that, you know, what, what we can do realistically that will help. And I'll probably get Michelle to stand up and say a few words later on anyway. Um, but tonight, uh, it, what I wanted to share with you is that obviously, um, I've not been part of the organisation for this for a few years. Uh, but I had a, a, a privilege of looking back at some of the things that we did and some of the earlier presentations that we did on the gift of the poor. And actually, I was quite inspired to look at some of the things that we've done in the past. And I thought I'd share this with you because you might find it quite inspiring. So I, I found this, power, uh, this slide from um, the uh, program in 2012. <coughs> I'm sorry if you can't see all that because these things are hanging down in the world. But um, perhaps, can we make it smaller? Is it or not? Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. There we go. That's better. Should have done it in a four yeah. by three. Should not have realised. Um, but you know, back in 2020, uh, 2012, uh, we we had programmes like this where we helped three different programmes. And I want to just pick out something uh, for this. But I want to also just to highlight the scripture we all know in Matthew 25 very well, where. Uh, God is talking about, you know, the fact is that whenever we help the least of the people who, you know, people who are in need, people that are in circumstances much lower than our own, um, we are really doing something that, you know, is very close to God's heart. It's, it's like we're really doing something for God. And I think that's a real great reminder. Now, I, I looked back at this and I thought, wow, we, you know, wow, in 2012 we, we did three programs. We helped the hospital get started in, in Cambodia, uh, we did a training program in India and we helped a, a hospital in, in Bolivia. And it reminded me of, of great you know, things that God has been able to do with the hearts and the money that we've been able to provide. And uh, just to, to think about this, you know, I want to just share this with you. This is an example of what was able to be done. We were able to give 20,000 US dollars as part, we allocated $60,000. Well, our goal was to raise $60,000, 20 for each of these three different programs, okay? We gave $20,000 and they were able, with that $20,000, to leverage $1.2 million because we gave $20,000 of funding. I mean, that's God, right? Yeah. God takes 20,000 and a seed and makes an incredible gift. And I looked, uh, <coughs> looked at some of the other programs that we did in the previous year. You know, looking at this, we helped 400 students in Bangalore, 250 uh, young men and women in Mumbai, 180 people in Delhi, and 41 women from Delhi and Chennai to get you know different uh, to get started with businesses and jobs and, and all sorts of different things. And I think wow, this is really inspiring. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we have the opportunity to do yeah. this to help people right. every year. And you know what was amazing in 2012? And I just want to you know look at this, commend our you know everyone's hearts, and also challenge people to think: Is are our hearts still in the same place mm -hmm. as it used to be? Because in 2012, our goal was $60,000. We raised over 100. Wow. The church gave over $100,000. Wow. Thames Valley Church alone. Okay? But we, our goal was only 60. So we were able to give you know, abundantly to these programs and to help the poor. And you know, I think of these scriptures like you know, in Acts 10, where it says, "Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God." You know, when we when we help the poor, it's 
you know, our prayers and our gifts, you know, God notices. And, and when we give, you know, as much as we owe, or, or even beyond what we are able, you know, God uses it in amazing ways. And I think that just to encourage us to think about this as we think about the programs that we might choose to follow this year. And I'm not putting forward today, my goal today is really to suggest a couple of ideas, and then if the church is, you know, re receptive and you feel like this is what you'd like to go behind, get behind, we, we, we can support one or the other or both. Uh, and, uh, and also, we'll also discuss uh, in terms of allocating whether we want to continue funding work in the UK uh, and local programs, or whether we want to manage that within our family groups, and maybe we can throw some ideas around tonight. So, um, you know, I remember in 2014 we did uh, work in, in Africa, um, and another scripture, whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, uh, and he will reward them for what they have done. You know, that, that's also encouraging, I think, you know. Um, not necessarily that we get rewarded, but, you know, the, the mindset of, well, you know, when we're giving, we're, we're giving to God. You know, we're giving to God. Uh, and when giving God a little bit, that he does a lot with. And that's, that's, that's the amazing thing. So what about this year? Well, some of you will remember the Village of Hope in New Delhi. And uh, I, I took the time in the past few weeks to be talking to people in... Uh, um, Hope UK and, um, and, and abroad, and just asking about, well, look, you know, are there some programs that we could help? And there's two programs that came up that we have historical links with. First of all, uh, the program of the Village of Hope of Delhi. Now, you remember the Village of Hope? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that pro uh, over um, mm -hmm. that we had a buy a brick campaign? Do you remember that? The early church? Yeah. 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 And we all yeah. built, yeah. you know, yeah. and we literally paid. For the, the London and UK churches paid, I remember that, that must have been yeah. like 20 years ago, yeah. maybe more. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was, it, and we, we all bought these little bricks, and I remember there was a little plaque on them or something like that, isn't there? And, uh, and I had them in my practice, and I remember I was getting patients to buy some bricks and all that stuff, and it was, it was fun. Um, but we were able to build this village. Has anyone actually been there? Here? Yeah, okay, great. So, you know, I, I had the privilege of visiting there actually a long while ago now. But, uh, you know, I was blown away uh, by the fact that, you know, these people, and if you know India well, um, poverty is, is on a different scale from what you understand as poverty here. And I think it's probably the same in Africa and other places like that, you know, uh, and Brazil, if you've ever been there. But when you see poverty, it's, it's a different scale of poverty that you don't really see in the West. Um, and this was a, a, amazing. So, you know, they had all this uh, stuff there. And it's just a reminder about leprosy. And, and the fact is, it, for those of you who don't know, the Village of Hope is a, is a village built specifically for leper families, sufferers of leprosy, and, and their families. So maybe uh, the parents or one of the parents or, you know, one of the uh, uh, family members has leprosy. And it, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a condition that even today bears a certain stigma. Uh, and, uh, and certainly in, 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 in somewhere like India, you wouldn't get the opportunities to do the sorts of things you and I would consider for granted, because people would you know, be afraid and be <coughs> afraid of, of this condition. You know in, in, the, in the scriptures how the lepers were treated you know, by everybody except Jesus. Uh, you know, they were, they were kind of shunned, and, you know, people were afraid of them. And, you know, I, I don't know if you ever saw the film The Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. Do you remember that? And there was the, the, that leper lady or what? I, don't know. I remember a scene where they're in this cave, and they're all, you know, hun hunkered down in a cave. And you have to be old. So. So, you know, I have my 60th birthday this year, so I qualify as old now. Uh, I don't feel it, but I qualify as it. And, uh, and so the... You know, and so, you know, you can't imagine what it must be like to be in that. And if you look at this kind of disfigurement that you get, I mean, imagine that, you know, your hands looking like that, and your feet and your toes and everything else. So it's, it's pretty serious. Um, but it's a completely treatable, curable, preventable condition. It is simply treated with antibiotics today. That's all. It is completely curable. And yet, people, you know, 
still suffer and don't get the care they need uh, because there's a stigma attached to it. So the village provides courses uh, for, the, and for the families of leprosy, leprosy uh, sufferers. They, do, you know, they can do sewing needlework, they do paramedical training, there's computer training, there's English language training, and you know, basically the idea is to help these families to provide for themselves. And most of the programs that we've supported over the years <coughs> are not just giving money to poor people uh, that they can, you know, live. It's, it's really to help people get started in doing something, be able to provide for themselves. And we've been very careful with our um, due diligence, if you like, to, to work and support programs where we could see that there was going to be a possibility that they, in the long term, become self-sustaining. Think about the work in Zambia. You know, basically Zambia is now self-sustaining. Basically, a lot of the programs we've supported in the past are now self-sustaining because we've helped them get started. And the, the beauty of the funding that we provide for most of these programs is that we provide general, non-specific funding. Most of these programs, when they get corporate funding or you know, uh, help from the UN or other uh, bodies, uh, funds are restricted to specific purposes only. And therefore, the, what they don't get any funding for is the actual just day-to-day -day admin of keeping the place open. They get all the money for the actual specific programs like you know medicines or this or, or equipment, but they may not be funding to actually run the office. And, and, and that's what we were able to do, like for example in Cambodia, they, they had all the, the equipment, but they weren't able to actually get started. To, 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 they need funding to actually write the, um, uh, the proposals for the funding, and that is what we helped to support, and that led to an amazing uh, bounty that God provided. Uh, people have been out to help, and uh, there's been uh, uh, various people have been out to volunteer. Um, there's a, a, a person I don't know this person, but uh, in uh, Bradfield actually. So I don't, know, uh, I don't know whether she's a disciple or not. Did you ever hear from Jane? I didn't get an answer. We do. No. 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 Um, and uh, there are corporate donors um, uh, who do help, but the problem is even the corporate donors kind of don't want to give to leprosy because of the stigma attached to it. It's kind of, mm, can't we, you know, how about just supporting children, or, you know, children's always popular, or something like that, where they, it doesn't, you know, a corporate doesn't want to be associated with something like leprosy because it's, it's mm -hmm. a cool. And that's, that's one of the problems. But well, we know that in India, one of the great things about India at the moment is that every corporation has to give 2% of its annual uh, um, turnover in, in uh, social responsibility. They have to give it. It's, you know, it's mandatory in India that if you work as a corporation in India, 2% of your money has to go to help you know, uh, the poor. So that's a fantastic thing. Um, um, so that does help. But the problem is there's still a shortfall of funding, and currently this, uh, for next year, or this year, well, yeah, next year's budget, there's a £38,500 shortfall. However, there is, so the needs in, 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 the, in the village of Hope are that, you know, there is a challenge in getting corporate donors, uh, uh, and there's a, a shortfall. But we may get a renewal of corporate funding because there is a donor that gave 20,000 last year that it may well also give it this year. We haven't had confirmation of that yet. And if they gave it, then they would need about 18,500, which would be also something that we may be able to support. So that's one proposal, uh, which is to, you know, the village of Hope that all of us actually who are a bit older and been in the church for a while. Help to build that village. Uh, we, you know, we worked, we worked with brick, we got sponsorship with bricks, and those bricks were literally uh, the money that you know we bought the bricks that that built the village. So that's uh, the one thing. And so you know, um, Jane actually sent me a, a video, but uh, I don't think we have time to really watch it. But uh, and. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's not in English, so you wouldn't understand a word that's been said. So, uh, I, I watched it and thought, well, that's probably not that helpful because it doesn't really explain anything very much. But it's a video of this guy uh, in his little chair. And, uh, and anyway, the, the fact is, uh, just to, to recognise that you know it, it is a, a real 
it is really great work that we can do. Right, the second one, and this is probably something, uh, well, this is definitely something that's close to our hearts. I know that, you know, Harry and Siraj went there, uh, and, uh, and Ben Dannett, I think, has been out there, and others. Um, and this is a school in uh, Nepal. Now, we, uh, I think we helped, we helped build it or decorate it or something. What did you do? We, we helped to, what was it? We went out to refurbish it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and we of course have helped Nepal uh, in, in a separate program um, that uh, JP, you know, we uh, helped get started on that uh, uh, school building. But what we, um, what we have here is a, 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 a school that is, has a challenge now this year. And basically the school, uh, which began in 1996, is basically providing education for underprivileged kids. Um, and uh, it, the children are chosen, as it says here, are from the neighborhood on a needs basis, and the poorest kids are assessing and get a place. Um, we have a couple of vocational training centers in, in uh, Chamail village, and, uh, and it's helping about 5,000 people. And you know, we, there are hope youth corps that go and, and help out each year. Um, and uh, there's obviously uh, a great team uh, helping with medical, dental, educational teams uh, that, that will uh, serve at the school. Now, uh, in 2018, that's last year, uh, a, uh, a group uh, went out from many of the churches, a lot of them from Thames Valley, uh, Becky and uh, Ben uh, went out there, so you, know, uh, you guys know it uh, and know the area as uh, well as Becky here. Becky's in Oh, she's in Bournemouth now, isn't she? That's right, yeah. Um, um, and Ben isn't here, he wasn't here. He's been a pre -teens. Okay, right. Ben's here. So, and Ben was giving dental checkups to all the kids with his little headlight and, you know, checking out their teeth and, and looking after the kids, and that was great. Um, now, the thing is that uh, most of the kids there, you know, they can't afford any further education, so we're looking. Uh, for donors to sponsor the students through secondary school. And um, there's a real need at the, at the moment now is that uh, to get the teachers well trained and that the head teacher that ran the school is now leaving um, or left. And uh, there are people that uh, London uh, Hope uh, or Hope UK have sent through to help uh, give them training. <coughs> but basically, all the teachers there have never had any proper formal training in, in doing the job. So um, what we're looking for is, is really to have um, a way of funding better training to help the school to actually do, the, uh, uh, do what it wants to do. So the needs are to be able to give more for the teacher training um, and uh, um, there is again a shortfall in terms of funding, which they're they're meeting, they're they're supporting it through historical reserves. But obviously those reserves will run out and need to be topped up at some point. And the other option is also for the church or or individuals in the church may want to you know basically sponsor a student through secondary education. So these these are a couple of the ideas that we've got. So it's the Hope Village and the Nepal School, which I thought both have a sort of historical connection with our church, and we could support one or e uh, either one or both of these in some way. And I think you know wanted to put it out for everyone here to sort of think about it and you know see whether you have any thoughts. Um, and they sent a couple of pictures. These couple of kids. These are a couple of kids in the school, and the, um, saying. Yeah, thanks for considering that. Anyway, so that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Michelle, did you want to add anything? Um, <laughs> I came, but there's no the time. Well, shall we just have a quick discussion, maybe, and, and throw it out to people, A, to ask questions on how this <coughs> works or anything like that, if you have any questions, uh, and B, to, to kind of you know, talk about what we would like to do as a church uh, in the forthcoming year or years ahead. Um, you know, the, traditionally the gift of the poor has been always uh, for, you know, uh, programs abroad, 
Uh, typically, we're finding somewhere you know that uh, that has a, a need, a specific program that has a need. Um, and uh, as you know from some of the slides you saw earlier, that sometimes we supported multiple programs in the same year, and we said, okay, our goal is to get twenty thousand to each program um, if we can raise you know that. But uh, uh, on the other hand, the other thing is to also discuss, well, do we want to continue funding through the annual gift of the poor, um, you know, work uh, or uh, somebody to coordinate work uh, in the UK? How would you see some of that funding being used, Michelle? Yeah, well, um, I mean, I want to meet with each location again one more time to mm -hmm. solidify and confirm a few things. But I think... Um, just in terms of having a really good balance. Because if we think about the phrase that charity begins at home, and I think, you know, if we can do we can do really both really well. We can yeah. we can serve abroad really well and we can serve locally really well. And but I think um, for the funding here, I think and for the way our church is set up with not, without owning our own venues and just having certain restrictions in place um, and the uniqueness of our church. You know, we have a, a really great ability to be able to serve a, a bit of a different way in terms of being able to go out within the communities and empower them with perhaps knowledge or skills or, or things. So, you know, we'll be looking at doing different things um, like that within, you know, starting off perhaps within uh, local schools that are close to locations where we our services and trying to, and with marriage and parenting courses that are specifically marketed towards people in our community that will need that support mm -hmm. and things like that. So while we may not be able to have a, a food bank or a, or a soup kitchen because we don't have the venue, we can serve in other ways, but it, it will still come down to needing money for training, um, for perhaps t-shirts that we may need for events or for marketing materials and, and just different things that we'll need in order to be able to run even the local stuff. So we have to just want to be quite mindful if we do want to make sure we're making an impact really, that we be considerate of, of how we spread our funds out. And, and so I think, I mean, it seems to me that, you know, the, the focus for the local work is predominantly on our time and skills with some funding to for the necessary underlying training and stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and so we could consider something like we did last year where we keep a certain percentage, maybe 10 percent of the funds that we gather for local programs, or 5 percent, you know, we we'll see, I guess it depends on how much we're able to raise. But, uh, and what is the church feeling uh, in terms of going forward? So I think probably we should post this on, the because obviously only a fraction of the church are actually here, so um, we should post it out and I'll repeat it on Sunday maybe as well. Um, that uh, the you know, what, how is that? What's the feedback? So, someone else talk. Okay. So, um, I was just thinking about what you shared and um, just the different things that are going on in the various locations as mm -hmm. well. And I'm, I've literally just thought about this, so I'm just speaking out, thinking out loud in a way about how we can be creative about reaching out locally but also using that as opportunities to raise money. Mm -hmm. So I know there's an idea of us using the first Friday, potentially, of the month to do something in our locations. Mm -hmm. We could easily have a, um, an event where we, we say we're having a movie night and mm -hmm. invite people locally. So it doubles up as, hey, we're inviting you locally and we've got a church locally, but also it's an opportunity to raise money. Mm -hmm. So just being creative about mm -hmm. how we do some of those things. I know Ade had a dance, I think, a charity dance last yeah. week. And again, so it's just, yeah, thinking about how we double up in, yes, doing things locally to meet needs, but also creating opportunities to raise money through and some I think that this is, And that's, that's great, because what we want to do is inspire that kind of thought and yeah. process. Um, and, and, Yes, I know. Mm. Yes, yes. Um, so probably following on what Obi said, because the, you know, if the programs in Nepal, obviously we have a huge Nepalese um, community.
community locally or the shop, mm -hmm. you know, working mm -hmm. at the local hospital. So, you know, maybe that's something we can then help and reach out to that okay. community while yeah. we're doing stuff there. Yeah. My other thing, having been to the village of Hope many years ago, I, you kind of feel like, you know, we started something there. Yeah. We were at the start of something there. Yeah. That have, have we got responsibility to sustain that as well? Um, so, uh, you know, that's, that's something I occurred to me, you know, uh, having started the work now, I've been down to kind of support that. Story. Yeah, that's why I, it kind of appealed to me as well. Mm -hmm. that is, yeah. okay. I just have to choosing, but. So if you were to sponsor um, a child mm. through secondary school, how much would that cost? I don't know yet. I haven't had that information provided, but the, you know, I'll certainly find out. Mm. Um, thank you, Sheila, for doing this. Very fantastic. Mm. Um, <clears throat> what is your information? My, my desire would be to help both programs. Yeah. I mean, that would be my, my feeling would be you know, I, I would like to see us be able to raise, you know, funds at the level that we we used to, um, because it has dropped off in the last few years uh, for whatever reason. I don't know why that is. And, you know, I can't answer that. You can answer that, you know, individually. Uh, but um, hopefully, we can get inspired and 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 desiring to, you know, to give in the way that God wants us to. Um, and and we can we could you know my my desire would be my personal desire would be to be able to support both programs uh, and you know what you think well okay you know um, maybe I don't know last year I think we raised about forty something thousand dollars uh, it's always in dollars because it gets converted to go abroad uh, but you see in the past we've raised over a hundred so you know it's kind of like Okay, 40 to 100, you know, if we raise 100, we could support both programs mm -hmm. and we could have money for the UK as well, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, my desire would be to say, <coughs> let's blow it out and yeah. just, you know, really raise some very mm -hmm. good money and, and let God do it. If we have our hearts in the right place and we want to do it, then there's no reason it shouldn't happen. <coughs> no. I just want to also reiterate that uh, raising money or giving um, the, for the annual gift or doesn't have to be a, a lonely ordeal. Like you don't no. have to do it by yourself. It can like, be imaginative. As, as yeah. So either within your family or family group or within your neighborhood, like as we were saying. But mm. you know, you can be very creative about how you raise your money. Like, mm. so for instance, uh, I suppose us Americans are very well known for we fundraise for like everything. So, <laughs> but we we have things like spaghetti dinners, and we just buy we, we, we get we get a bunch of spaghetti, which is really cheap, some sauce, some garlic bread, and, and some drinks and then we charge five dollars a ticket and people come in, the venue gets donated and all that money goes to charity. And you don't have to do it as individuals. So I think that's always been probably that's been promoted in the past, just how much are we willing to sacrifice ourselves. So that's a bit of a bit of it. But uh, another way, you know, in order to engage with the community that we be saying is to get people involved. So but uh, well, yes, street yeah. collections, is there also openings for things like Shape Market? And, and I was thinking specifically something like at Wellington, where, you know, we always have so many people come, but yeah. we can literally be collecting that there, yeah. because there's a lot of people. Because they get a free bar, yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 a few quid yeah. 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 We could do a talk in, in the Wellington service, yeah. maybe, Malcolm, yeah. Yeah. and talk about that, you know, we're... we're fundraising for two programs and maybe share a little bit of that. Yeah. And maybe maybe what will help us if, if we think about this and how much money is required, to actually set a target, yeah. Yeah. a number that yeah. we communicate yeah. and we all pray about. Well because that sort of also if it feels like a real stretch, it means that I think it will sort of inspire yeah. personal responsibilities like wow I can't just give a few I, I really yeah. need to go in. So this is the first step. You know, it is so if the church is saying, yeah, we like these programs, we'd like to get behind them, and also, you know, 
if, if, if everyone is on the mindset, let's, let's try and support both, yeah. plus a UK mm -hmm. allocation, then mm -hmm. that makes it clear that what yeah. we're aiming for. Yeah. Uh, and then we can, I can get specifics as in what, you know, what are the actual <coughs> monetary needs and numbers, uh, more specifically once we know about that corporate donor, uh, because obviously that will influence how much is needed. Um, and, uh, and then we can go forward from there. So I suggest I revisit this in a month or so. Um, hopefully you have sufficient information. I don't have to do a full presentation, but it's maybe five, no, five minutes on a Friday or something to revisit and update everyone where we are. Well, I think Fridays is not the right forum. I agree. And we need to do this list. And the first, then really, first really, Sunday, really Sunday. Ready the first Sunday. There's yeah. only chance to get the word out to everyone. Mm. So perhaps, perhaps I should do... <coughs> uh, I'm not here on the next book, the service. The other yeah. thing is, Roger Packham would be yeah. very happy to do this presentation in his family group tonight, for example. Okay. Because so we're going to, we're going to Friday, two other yeah. places where they meet on Friday nights currently. Yeah. The Hampshire group and the, the Dorset group. Well, would it be a, so. helpful to actually share this presentation with every, every family group member? Yeah, yeah. 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 That would, yeah. So yeah. I'll send it to Malcolm, Malcolm just distribute it wherever. Uh, and then it will be... Uh, so, amen. Thanks, guys. Uh, I think time's up.